right before the chief was ran off the field. We prayed for something and habit breaks out. Can I tell you something? Listen to me this morning. You might disagree and that's all right. If you want a church that is packed out and that is flowing all over this building, then let's not get into too much of the heavy move of the anointing of God. Let's not preach against sin. Let's not begin to preach things that will cause people to be challenged. Let's serve some donuts and let's have some coffee and let's have a friendly seeker environment and let's go out here and give our orange juice out once in a while and I think everything will be fine and we'll pay our bills. We'll pack this place out. But honey, just as soon as you begin to teach and you begin to preach the uncut word of God, that there's no gray line, that's a black and white situation and that God is to be praised and the enemy is to be put under and we begin to run the chief off the ground. Just as soon as we begin to come in that area, guess what? Hell begins to send out their demons and their imps against the church and they begin to battle. That's why the church has to remain in a spirit of fasting. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Daniel receives a word from the Lord in verse 1. A vision of conflict that stunned him with a greatness. He says that he understood it. But in verse 12, he says that when he received the vision, he set himself to understand it. I take this to mean that in general, the general structure of the vision was probably clear to him. But the meaning of it in parts was probably not clear to him. Daniel set himself with tears and fasting and prayer to seek the meaning of this vision. And for three weeks he wrestled in prayer. For three weeks he wrestled in prayer over the vision and sought to know God's will. And verse 2 says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat, no wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for full three weeks. He said, God, I don't understand this vision. I know it's from you. It's evident, but I don't understand it. And I'm telling you what, I'm willing to put myself under. I'm willing to tell my flesh absolutely not for 21 days. I'm willing to lay on my face and cover myself with dirt. God, whatever I got to do, I just have to know what you're trying to speak to me. Amen. After three weeks, he went out to the banks of the Tigris River, verse 4. There he had a vision that was so awesome he could hardly bear it. Verse 5, he said, I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a man clothed in linen with loins, were girded with gold and beef fast. His body was like burrow, his face was like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam, burnished bronze, and the sound of his words were like the noise of the multitude. In other words, the single voice sounded like the roars at the metrodome. This appearance was so terrifying and so powerful. According to verse 7, even the men who were with Daniel, who could not see the vision, trembled and ran away to hide themselves from whatever it was. People believe that he was talking about Jesus. Now listen, go with me to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Just what if? Daniel chapter 8, verse 1, you there? Just what if? In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, Daniel, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw the vision that came to pass when I saw that I was at the Shushan in the palace, which is the province of Elam. And I saw the vision and I was by the river of Galea. Look at verse 16. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand this vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid, and I fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on 
my face toward the ground, but he touched me and he set me upright. And verse 8 and 9 says that Daniel lost his color. Go back with me, chapter 10. I just want you to understand that that person that stood before Daniel, it could have very well been speaking of Gabriel. Because I have a, a hard time understanding that if it was Christ, I don't think that he needed to have the assistance of an angel. The Bible says that whoever that person was, he was held up for 21 days in heaven. Kingdom, until the archangel Michael came to take over. I don't know if you understand, but the authority in the man of Jesus. The Bible says that the winds and the waves obey him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you with me? Go ahead and go back to verse 8 and 9. To make matters worse, a hand reached out and touched him, so he shook it terribly on his hands and knees. Then the voice said in verse 11, O oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, give heed to the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. Then he went on and he said, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day, verse 12, that you set your mind to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words or your prayers have been heard and I've come because of your prayers. Amen. If you're not engaged in some supernatural praying, honey, it might be why you're not moving the heavens. The enemy, I'm going to tell you what I feel. The enemy will occupy your time and then he'll begin to occupy you with everything else. But instead of you getting a fed, a fasted, a time to set aside and say, I'm tired of getting hooked into... Did you know that even church people, they'll begin... The time you ought to be locked away. Is there anybody here this morning uh, that you need the heavens to open up and to answer a prayer? Is there anybody here that you need the heavens to open up uh, and Michael to stand out before you uh, and take on the demonic form, the territorial spirit uh, that's set before you? Uh, is there anybody here uh, that needs a divine answer from God? Uh, question to you is then why have you allowed the enemy to occupy your time so much that he's got you out of calibration you don't pray like you used to you don't read like you used to now it's a packed up lunch in a paper sack when it used to be a four course meal laid out on the table. Yeah. And you used to take your time and say, God, I'm here. Now we want to pack it up in a paper sack and call it all done. But we still expect Gabriel and Michael to stand out of the realms of the heavens. Whenever the demonic force that is assigned that begins to present an accusation against us in the heavens. We expect Gabriel Michael to come out there and we're not willing to pray. We're not willing to fast. We're not willing to get committed unto God. Why? Because Friday night is going to corral night. Monday night is a great TV show.
show. Wednesday night is something else. Thursday night becomes something else. Sunday, I'll hit church occasionally, and that's it, Pastor. And when we leave, we shut everything off, and we never endeavor to get back into the realm of the Spirit of God. You want to shake the devils, honey, in your family? You want to shake the devils in this church? Then you begin to fast with Pastor. You begin to come together in a Solomon and fast in a Daniel fast and say, you know what? We're going to shake Southwest Florida. We're going to shake Alpha. We're going to shake an Edna Jezebel spirit that comes along. We're going to break their back. Amen. Yes. Jesus. Come close. He said, fear not in verse 12. Now this is immensely important for us to understand in prayer. Notice the words. In verse 12. I have come because of your prayers. I didn't come because you sit on the front row of the church. I didn't come because you openly throw a wad in the offering plate. I didn't come because but I came because evidently what you prayed it loosed and I was able to come. Verse 11 says I have been sent to you that is, God sent him. So the point is that God answered your prayer as soon as you began to pray three weeks ago. From the first day that you humbled yourself before your God, your words, your prayers have been heard. And I've come because of your words, your prayers. So this heavenly being has come because Daniel prayed and humbled himself before God and fasted. And that three weeks delay was not because God took three weeks to hear him. Pastor, I don't know why God's not hearing me. That sound familiar? God, aren't you hearing me? Come on, some of you even said this. Yeah. When are you going to hear? He hurt you. You laid your face on that floor. But now, what are you going to do? Yeah. You see, so many times, we like to put it in the pastor's court. We like to put it in God's court. <clears throat> so it says in verse 13. Verse 13. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for how many days? What's it say? 21 days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Now this one says, the reason the messenger of God was detained is because of a spiritual being called the prince of the kingdom of Persia. It stood against him. And the reason this angelic messenger got free from the opposition was because the angel Michael came over and took his place. In verse 13, it refers to the prince of kingdom of Persia. The natural meaning of this phrase would be that among the supernatural beings opposed to God, some at least one is assigned to a territory or more accurately to a kingdom named Persia. Now presumptively his job is to darken the people of Persia to keep them from having the truth and the light of God's word. His job was that he did not want truth to begin to expel from heaven unto Daniel to understand the vision. He wanted to stop that and he said the only way I can do is to press 